In this video, you're going to plot 12 edges of a unit cube, so of a wireframe cube, using the plot3 function. And then you'll draw a unit sphere that sits inside of that cube using dots. So use the dots to draw the sphere. The hint is that to draw the sphere, you just use the function sphere. So there's a MATLAB function sphere that will return 3D coordinates of a unit sphere. The bonus exercise is to use the function scatter3 to make a fun, colorful disco ball. Basically, you want to draw the sphere with each dot having its own unique color. And scatter3 is to plot3 as scatter is to plot. So I've already had a couple videos where I used the scatter function to draw dots with different colors. Each dot has its own color. And the, I, the principle here is exactly the same. You just have to add another input for the Z coordinates. Ultimately, the result of this project is going to look like this. This is the main project, and this is the bonus. You can see just the dots are colored. So this wireframe cube you have to draw. And the hint for drawing this cube is draw it one line at a time. And you have to think about what are the x coordinates, what are the y coordinates, and what are the z coordinates. And then you have to go through and draw each line. All right, let's switch to MATLAB, keep a positive attitude, and complete this assignment. So here's our partially completed MATLAB code. We don't get too much of a hint here at the beginning. Uh, we just see this plot3 function, and we can see that there's going to be x, y, and z inputs, and it's going to be a black line that has a line width of 2. So let's just get started. I'm, I'm going to, I'll write down the first couple of uh, lines, and then that will let you see how it works. So I'm going to draw a line that goes on x from 0 to 0, on y from 0 to 1, and z from 0 to 0. So now let's plot this thing and see what it looks like. So it's so far it's just a line that's a pretty uninspiring cube, but uh, we have to start somewhere. So now I'm going to draw another line. Let's say this one goes from 0 to 1 on x and 0 to 0 in y. All right, so now we're getting somewhere. You can see an L shape. And you can see now what are the other two legs going to be. So it's going to be, I drew this line and this line, and now we have to draw this line and this line. So let's first draw this line up here. So x is going to go from 0 to 1. Let me paste a new line in here. x is going to go from, so for this line, x is going to go from 0 to 1. And the y coordinates go from 1 to 1. And we're still at the z equals 0 plane. And finally, we have this last piece. So let's see what happens here. x goes from 1 to 1, so it's a line vertical in the x plane. y goes from 1 down to 0. Or you could write 0 to 1, actually, that's also OK. And again, with uh, x, uh, with z here on, on the 0 plane. So, so far, this looks like a box. It doesn't look like a cube. But how do we know that this is a cube? It, it said plot 3, so somewhere there should be a third dimension. What's happening here is we are looking through one of the dimensions. And in particular, we're looking down on the top of the cube. So you don't see any of the height of the cube in this picture. So we want to be able to rotate this thing around. You can rotate this, or you can activate the rotation manually by clicking on the figure. And you'll see, so now I clicked on the editor, and now I have this editor menu tab open. If you click on figure, then the figure tab will open. And you can select this icon, which is like a cube, and then there's an arrow wrapping around it. But I also like to activate this by the command. So it's rotate 3D on. Now you can left click and drag. And you can now get a better picture of what this cube is going to look like. So this is the z-plane. This is the bottom of the cube. And now the next section we want to draw is the top line. So this is going to be the top of the cube. This part is actually pretty simple because it's exactly these same four lines. We're not changing the lines. We just shift them up on the z-axis. 
So you can literally just copy and paste all of these uh, four plotting lines, and you just have to change the Z coordinates. There you go. And let's make this red lines. I do want to say one quick thing about this property value pair that I have here, line, w line width. The W here, so the, actually the full property is line width. But the thing is that MATLAB will only require a sufficient number of characters for these property labels such that MATLAB is totally clear about which property you're referring to. So there's no property that starts with line W and then ends in something else. The only property that starts with line W is line width. So in fact, you only need to specify up to line W. If you would write just line like this, MATLAB doesn't like that. And the problem is that there's actually multiple properties that start with line. So it has to be at least one more character. All right, so let's draw these lines. And now we're getting somewhere. Now you see exactly what the cube is going to look like. We only need to draw the lines here. Now, if you get confused about which axis is which, you know, is this X or is this Y, you can just put labels on. So here I have the X label is X, the Y label is Y, and the Z label is Z. And then you know which one is which. So let's start by drawing this line here. So we just have to think about it for a minute. So the X coordinate goes from 0 to 0. This is still X equals 0 up here. The Y coordinate goes from 0 to 0. And the only thing that changes on this line is the Z coordinate. That goes from 0 to 1. So let's write that in here. X goes from 0 to 0. Y goes from 0 to 0. Z goes from 0 to 1. And let's make this a blue line. Neat. So that looks good. Now let's go on and plot this line here in the corner. And so, uh, so we think about this for a minute. So it goes from x0 zero to 0. So the x coordinate isn't changing. So that part's OK. And the y coordinate goes from 1 to 1. And that part's also not changing. And the z goes from uh, 0 to 1. So there you go. Oops, I wanted to make this blue, actually. So what would happen if I made a mistake and I, I looked at this wrong or I interpreted the plot wrong and I accidentally did this? So here we get the wrong answer. I mean, this actually could be kind of interesting. You could put an X on the back of the cube or something for to model structural support. Uh, but this is not what we want. Unfortunately, there isn't a whole lot that you can do here. You can uh, manually remove, so if you click on the figure and you click on the mouse icon, you can then click on these individual components and then, for example, press delete on the keyboard and that will remove that component. However, I'm not a big fan of that. You know, one of the huge advantages of, of writing code is that you can reproduce what you've done perfectly, exactly, notwithstanding some random numbers, but even those can be controlled. So if I make a mistake when I'm plotting, my preference is to go back and uh, clear the figure and start again from scratch. So there we go. Now we have two lines. And let's see, the third one is, right, I'm just going to paste this in. So now let's plot this line. And I have no idea which two axes these are. So I'll label them. So this line up here is going to go from uh, x0 to x0. So that's correct. And it's going to go uh, y is 1 to y is 1, and z is 0 to 1. And again, this has to be blue. Great. One more to go. x goes from 1 to 1. y goes from 0 to 0. And z goes from oops, 
0 to 1. Great, so here's our nice cube. Now watch what happens when I, as I move this around the circle, it's changing dimensions. The axes are stretching and compressing as I'm moving them around. Sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's not. So I'm gonna type axis square. That forces the axes to be square. And now it's the same perspective every time I move this around. So there's no uh, warping or changing of this cube. All right, so now I'm going to plot the sphere. And if you're curious how the sphere function works, you can just select it and press open sphere. Now that opens this file. And you can see it's not too long, so you could have, you know, if you want to brush up on your geometry and trigonometry, you can go through this file and, and see that actually this isn't really so complicated. It's just some angles, uh, two sets of angles, and then you use cosine and sine functions to combine those angles into the Cartesian XYZ coordinates. This isn't really part of the project in this video, but I do want to highlight the idea that, you know, these MATLAB functions are not these weird, mysterious beasts that are impossible to understand. They're, most of them are just regular text files. You can open them and go through them line by line to figure out how they work and to understand what they do. But uh, I'm just going to use the function here. So by default, with no inputs, the sphere will generate a unit sphere and it will return the coordinates x, y, and z. So it's interesting to look at them. These are actually full matrices. And so that gives us the question of how exactly do we plot this sphere when these outputs are matrices? So what should we do here? Well, one thing we can do is just try it. And then if we get an error message, we'll inspect the error message and that should tell us something. So I'm gonna plot SX by SY by SZ. And these are going to be black circles with a magenta face. So let's see what this does. Ah, so in fact, that worked. MATLAB allowed us to use plot three to combine these matrices in the X, Y, and Z dimensions. So that's interesting to note. Uh, but it also appears that this did not really draw the kind of cube that we were expecting. I was expecting, or what we need to do, is plot a cube that's, uh, sorry, plot a sphere that's inside this cube. But when you look at the coordinates of the sphere, in fact, this is a unit sphere. So it ranges from minus one to plus one, and the center is at zero. However, the center of the cube is not in the center of this Cartesian space. The center of the cube is somewhere here. It's 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So it's 0 0.5 in all three dimensions. So what should we do? We have two options here. One is we can get rid of all of this stuff, start again from scratch, and draw a new cube that goes around here that's much bigger. But uh, I claim that this was correctly done, and uh, I'm the teacher, you should always listen to the teacher. <laughs> a better solution, and perhaps easier, is to scale the dots that make up the sphere so that they're smaller and shifted, and so they will fit inside of this cube. So how can we do that? One thing we need to do is, uh, well, first let's think about what needs to be done. So the, the center needs to be shifted by 0.5 in every direction. If we were to shift the sphere by 0.5 in this direction, 0.5 in this direction, and 0.5 in the z direction, then the sphere should be in the center of this cube. So let's try that. I'm just going to add an offset of 0.5. And maybe you, can, oops, maybe you can already determine that that's not going to be sufficient, but sometimes it's good to work one step at a time. And now I can just run this line of code again, but that's gonna make it difficult to interpret. So in fact, I'm gonna run all of this code. All right, so this is looking better. We're not exactly there yet, but uh, we have successfully centered the sphere so that it's centered at the the center of the cube. So, and now what do we need to do? So the cube now, uh, sorry, the sphere now goes 
from minus 0.5 to plus 1.5, which means the entire distance is two. It's two units up here. But the cube is one unit of distance. So we need to scale the whole thing. We need to scale the sphere down by a factor of two. And so I'm going to do that first before adding the offset. And now let's run all of this code again. All right, now this looks good. We have our sphere and it's inside the cube. So that successfully completes the main part of the assignment. And now I'm going to talk about the bonus exercise, which is basically just to redraw the sphere using colorful dots. So let's start, let's see if this is easy to do. It will be easy to do if we can just copy and paste plot three. And then we're gonna to need to change the inputs a little bit because remember the last input was filled to make the dots fill to, to fill the face in. And then we needed to add a size. So the size of the dots was the third input into the scatter function, but now we're in scatter three, so it's gonna be the fourth input. Let's set these to be 100. And now we need to, to input uh, some color value for all of these different dots. So for starters, let's just try a random matrix that's the same size as SZ. Let's see what happens. So I'm gonna actually get rid of this line and run the whole cell. Oh, oops, this was a little mistake here. It should be size. Now run the whole cell again, and it doesn't like something. So it's saying X, Y, and Z must be vectors of the same length. So that's actually telling us that this input is not going to work. This is not sufficient because these are matrices and the error message says that they must be vectors. So we need to vectorize these matrix inputs. And I'm gonna do that by using uh, just one colon inside parentheses. And now I'm also gonna to have to change the size of this to also be vectorized. And now let's try it. All right, so now we're getting somewhere. Now we've made a ball with colorful dots, and each time I run this line of code, the color is gonna change because these are all random numbers. So it, it is a little bit um, perhaps initially frustrating that uh, the scatter three function only allows vector inputs and the plot three function allows matrix inputs, but that's just something that you have to learn to work with. One last thing I wanted to do, the slides actually showed these changing colors smoothly as it went around the, um, the, the phase axis of this uh, sphere. So to do that, we need to increase the colors from 0 to, to 255. And the number of steps between 0 and 255 has to be the same as the length of any of these uh, vectors. So I'm going to say lin space from 0 to 255 using the number of elements in SZ. So now we've uh, completed the bonus exercise to look like what I showed in the slides. And I would just like to point out that this numL function is used to indicate the total number of elements in the input, regardless of whether it's a vector or a matrix. So I could have also written, so first of all, if I just say length SZ, that's wrong because that's going to return 21. And I'm pretty sure that's going to give us an error. So you could say length SZ vectorized, and that will work. That's no problem. Uh, but I think numL is a slightly better solution in this case. Good, so that's the last thing. Um, here I switched off the ticks, and that just uh, yeah, turned off the, the numerical labels because we don't really care about the numbers here. And uh, this is just a reminder that sometimes in MATLAB graphics, particularly in 3D graphics, it can look nicer if you turn the axis off. So I, I think that looks a little bit nicer.